and it's Wednesday already and I haven't done a Facebook live in fact I've been very much in the energy since the weekend of going deep down inside and it's very much the cancer energy that we're in right now the Sun is in cancer and the moon is in Virgo and Virgo is really high in my chart and I got a black and white screen today because it's kind of how I'm feeling my daughter has been sick with a cold and uh, my immune system decided that it could do with an upgrade too so I've got a really sore throat and a big headache and just like cancerian energy I wanted to just go deep down and crawl in under under my covers and just warm myself and allow myself to rest when my mind wants me to show up and I just haven't been feeling it. My mind wants me to go out there and prepare, prepare for the week, prepare for all the crap that's on my to-do list and there's blogs to write and people to serve and children to nurse through feeding the fear and the illness so that her system can upgrade. So there, I've been feeling a lot of earth in this sort of watery emotion of looking for evidence of all the reasons and justifications why I need to keep going when my body's actually saying, be intentional, let your body rest, be patient, and how easy it is to go into this place where we think that if we don't keep going and um, if we don't see results straight away that we need to stop and I've been realizing that things are coming a lot faster the more I let go of this need to get it right and get it perfect and prepare and stop worrying about this and actually break my own expectations just allow myself to be okay with everything that's coming up at the moment including green snot very graphic but just focusing on on that big why because sometimes it, it, it feels like madness and maybe you can relate to that this week I've been noticing a lot of old stories that keep coming up and and I'm scaring myself <laughs> instead of just allowing myself to get quiet and just stay with it and go in and give myself that trust space which has been a big theme for me my whole life but something that's really deepening into my healing trust work with horses and uh, giving myself to trust that 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 everything is in divine order um, and that I needed to just unhook and go deep and retreat and get under the covers and not look at it as a what my mind wants to think of as a very scary place to sort of be floating in the betweenness of the way things should be and all this crazy space of gently loving it from the inside not the outside you know breaking those old old stories that are running on my nervous system scaring the shit out of me one minute at a time um, hi Maris nice to see you here so if you can relate to feeling a little bit uh, in that place of you know trying to swim upstream and feeling like you have to get it right and you have to do it now instead of just leaning into trust which is so totally against what your nervous system is saying that anything you haven't done or anything you're not doing that you think you should be doing is a very dangerous place to be that there's something to be very very afraid of there and to just allow yourself to stay with it you know I've really been going longer in my meditation at the moment and and it's really interesting that me my external environment and I'm just looking outside at the trees and it's windy today and a little bee flew in here earlier just as I was about to press pause and there are alarms going off in the neighborhood and my child is wanting me and there's so much going on in this whole thing about expectations and 
and and allowing myself to push pause so I encourage you you know to push just push pause for a minute just allow yourself to feel into that feel into the needs of what it is that you want what you require right now and know that the world is going to carry on just allow yourself to follow without knowing because when you go through that sort of un uncomfortable place and I spoke about letting go into a place of not needing to know last week thank you for the hearts thank you for the love your nervous system doesn't have a choice but to say gosh you know we got through that and I'm still alive and my heart is still beating and then you start to feel good because your mind actually starts to go to well what else can I do from that space and what else can I do from there hi Ricky nice to see you um, I'm coming at a different time today because I'm actually going to go lie on my bed and drink another big green juice and, and just uh, let myself be okay with letting go of these expectations. And I always say that you don't break your heart, people don't break your heart, we, they break our expectations and that applies to you too because you are complete. And the world keeps telling you that you have to be addicted to going outside and into the distractions and into buying things that you don't need and doing things that you actually don't need to do in order to complete you. And I'm just inviting you to go with me today, to go deeper inside into this beautiful energy of cancer. It's very sensitive and, and, and she loves a soft place to fall. My daughter's birthday is on the 6th of July so you know she is is very much this beautiful mirror of softness of, of of asking for what she needs without the neediness and cancerian energy can be very needy because it's kind of like a dog or or a horse if if you're not in complete alignment with knowing your own space and holding your own stake you're not safe you're actually dangerous and then the animal's going to push you around and the animal's going to say holy crap this person doesn't feel good and i need to step into the lead and this is where they pull you around they bully you and they nibble you and they bite on you because you are collapsing from that place of cooperation to actually lead from where the heart is hi kate and like i said you know I have a talk coming up for any of you that are in Johannesburg this week out at the Body Mind Expo and I have no idea who's going to show up or what it's going to look like and my mind wants to know, my nervous system wants to be attached to the story that I need to prepare, that it needs to be look a certain way and I, I'm realizing more and more as I sort of lengthen into going into two hours of meditation every day now and doing a lot more futuring work that it's okay for me to go into living from that place as if it has already happened and actually speak it out from that place of the room was full and everybody was receptive and they were ready to clear out their own crap and I didn't need to prepare which takes you out of the present moment just like these Facebook lives that I do. It really is that place of listening to just what your heart wants to say. You know, your heart is wanting you to raise up all the time and get out of your head so if you just listen to it if you just tell it you tell listen to what your heart is telling you and you go there and you be patient and gentle and compassionate with yourself that addictive part of you that's addicted to how it should look or what things should be um, changing and at the speed at which they should be changing that addiction of wanting to know what the outcome is goes away because you're expanding you're expanding into who you've always been which is just pure love light language it's the energy of you and I love that saying I can't remember who said it but that you are what you love not what loves you and I think love is one of those things that's very misidentified you know working with people that have gone through trauma or chronic unpredictable toxic stress so daily stuff that is traumatic but they don't even know that it is anymore a lot of this time it's that little child part that's in them that just wants to be loved 
and you can't hear her you can't hear that aspect of yourself when you are looking for love in all the wrong places um, when you're looking for something outside of you to complete you so we generally when we're not allowing ourselves to feel in order to heal you have to feel in order to heal or make yourself whole you we generally ignore that you know that deep expansive call to listen to our own heartbeats it's a beautiful book I, I, I read and I can't remember who the author is but it's called the art of hearing heartbeats if you know who that is post it below um, it's a beautiful book to just again expand into that place of loving that you don't know loving that you don't need to prepare and when that voice comes up to say to you I can't afford to get sick love it you know add that to your sentence so that's that's how I teach myself and practice and and show my clients that the fastest quickest way to come back to being present in the moment you can't be present if you're preparing for the outcome of something that you have absolutely no idea what it's going to look like um, so you know just think of a thought right now and you can type it in the comment below if if you're willing to play with this energy you know as children we we didn't ever let our heads stop us we played for the sake of playing um, from this place of imp Im imagination that everything was possible and we get that trained out of us and we stop creating our lives from this beautiful energy of play and, and and compassion and loving whatever comes up so you know one of the things that I that's been coming up for me right now is um, I need to keep pushing through I can't allow my body to rest because there's people waiting for me I had a a brave mastermind action group come on Sunday and so much growth and expansion and um, inquiry came out of it and there's things I need to get back to that group of amazing women so that they can keep on going the art of hearing heart words, that's it Laura isn't it a beautiful book Jan Phillips yeah one of the most beautiful books I've ever written uh, I've read <laughs> isn't that interesting I just went into the future of the book that I have already written um, and here's another thing when you're not going to take action if you're not doing the work and you don't just and you don't start somebody will will take that and and go with it because the universe is looking for the person that's going to take that into physical actualization I hope I'm making sense I feel like I'm rambling a little bit all over the place but that's just kind of how I roll you know looking at what wants to come through me what needs to be received today um, what are people willing to hear rather than what I think you need to hear or what I'm asking for and I'm always so grateful that you show up because this is part of my process of how I get to integrate some of the crazy that's swirling around in my reality that just going into that place of and I love that right changes how we can show up and be with it without going into another distraction or addiction or in order to avoid feeling the discomfort because when we when we go into the into that in our in our bodies felt sense in our heart place it's 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 it becomes less of the normal to keep trying to hide and avoid these callings or deny that they're even there these feelings that you're having so when that happens we become but we become a society of very disconnected people and this is why I do the work that I do because I want to heal this great separation sickness um, that's really killing the world and just return us to be the stewards firstly of our own hearts because if we're not guarding and devotionally practicing loving from deep down we can't show that up in the world in a different way hello Pascali nice to see you here so I, I hope this is resonating give me some some hearts give me some thumbs up if this is a conversation that you're willing to to have today and, and we're, if you're willing to just go back into some of that childlike stuff and stop scaring yourself silly so that you can do the work in the world because we don't live in a world that wants us to be connected to our hearts um, 
there's multi-billion dollar industries that, that we're feeding into every time we scare ourselves with the addictions and the worry and the anxiety and the control and the people pleasing. And when you're avoiding your heart, you have to get into your head to justify why you're ignoring the truth. You have to just start loving yourself out loud. Just start, no, it's not, you know, it's not a magic pill. It's pragmatic psychology that, that's, that you're always going to be moving through what, what I go into, the, into my work of in the five element feeding cycle. That, you know, water feeds wood and wood feeds fire and fire feeds earth and earth feeds metal. And, and when you know that, then you're no longer attached to things showing up any different to what they're showing up and being. This is where you get to break your expectations and you start get get out of this addiction to the old story. And the first thing, like I said, that's always going to happen in, is your mind is going to take you into denial because it feels unsafe. It feels dangerous. Hey, Faraz. You know, your mind's always going to say, you know, how, how can you do it? There's no way you can do that. And again, I got a beautiful horse called Chief that really showed up for, for me yesterday that just said, trust, lean more into trust, lean into trust and, and go into as if it has already happened. So when you're journaling, write it as if it has already happened six months or two years from now or three years from now and get really specific on the details. So if your old limitation is, oh, there's no way I can possibly do that, you never start. Because you've already shut yourself down. And, and, and then you have to start looking for visible proof as to the, all the reasons and justifications why you can't do this. Does anyone else can't hear me? Just give me some thumbs up if you can hear me. Um, Cassie says she can't hear anything. And I have been interestingly very supported by the universe over the last couple of days to get back into my heart, get back into bed and, and just hydrate and sleep and spend time with my daughter to give my body time to rest and to just trust that everything can wait. So the internet hasn't been working and I had to postpone some of my Skype clients yesterday because I couldn't get on Skype. You can hear? That's great. Um, so, you know, just know that you're... you're your mind is always going to go out looking for evidence as to why you can't do what you know you need to do, what your purpose is. And those deflections are always going to come from your perception of your old limitations that you're attached to in your stories that you're still telling yourself that you don't have enough money or that you, you're too tired and love that. You know, so add that onto your sentences, you know, because your brain is always going to say, oh gosh, you know, I'm too tired, like, it, like it's been saying to me all week when I know that I miss my community and I wanted to, uh, you forgot your earphones in, that's funny. Yeah, so, you know, that was what I call a pattern interrupt, so thank you, Cassie. Um, yeah, your mind is always going to tell you why you can't. And that's where you need to just push pause and give it a voice and find out what age it is. And this is part of the healing trust technique that I take my clients through. So if you're interested in that, let me know. But know that you're not your story. You are the storyteller. And you're a storyteller of magnitude. And when you can tell the, the story from your heart, you're not in lack anymore. Right? Because you're just being generous in your vulnerability and your rawness and your realness. And that's where people will want to hear what you have to say. So if you're going into, oh, you know, my partner thinks I'm crazy, add, and I love that. I don't have enough money, and I love that. And really say it like you mean it, because you know when your nervous system is protecting you from doing anything that's new, it's going to keep yada, 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 making a huge big noise. So even if it isn't truly a life or death situation, your nervous system will always make it feel that way until it sees evidence otherwise. You know, so this again brings me to this whole thing around the difference between expectation and awareness. 
is there's nothing to prove and there's nothing to hide ever. And yet we keep prove, trying to create visible proof and go into every reason and justification why we're doing what we're doing instead of just doing it. You know, be that secure attachment for yourself. Be the lead. Be the lead horse. And go anyway, regardless of who follows. So, you know, for example, on, on Saturday, I had a really crazy day of contrasts. I, I had been uh, at a barn working with two horses that had these really mystery symptoms. They kept colicking for absolutely no reason. They'd been going on and on and on, and they'd been testing and doing all sorts of, of things, and, and, and yet this was still happening. And they were very concerned because colic for a horse can mean death. So I was visiting the one who was in ICU at, at, at a horse vet at a time when there was a very, very sick little pony that these vets were trying really, really hard to, to keep her alive and, and get her healed up. And it wasn't convenient, right? Because we can't always prepare ourselves for what is going to come through to us. You know, when you come from a place of no expectation, you just get to know that you are exactly in the space and the right time to do whatever is required of you in that moment, even while your head is going, I can't bear this, this hurts too much. I can't, I can't do this, I can't hold the space. And coming back down to the heart and just being totally open to what is it that I can contribute to this horse in the moment before they they put a bullet in its head. And it was it was bittersweet but there were also the emotions of the vets and and you know this work is never easy death is never an easy transition and yet it's one that we can't avoid that we're you know the one thing we can know for sure is that we're all going to die how we how we move out of our bodies is is the choice so allow yourself to have that and allow yourself to have the feeling of extremes, what I call pendulation in neuro, neuropsychology or neurophysiology of my work that I do with the nervous system is that you have to allow yourself to come down when, you, when, when, you're, when you're required to come down and stop scaring yourself, right? Because sometimes like in that situation with the horse, I was so aware of the intensity of all the other ponies and horses that were there for operations and they were sick and they were healing that actually witnessed the passing of their friend you know the physical act of seeing that pony die and leave its body and even though animals aren't attached to their bodies the same way as we are there was some trauma of that experience of going oh my gosh this could be me one day we're here, one, one next day we're not. And I know that really, really well, living with deep depression or bipolar or, and, a, or, and a brain tumor for many, many years, that I have those days when I kind of go looking for evidence of, well, what's the point? I could be dead tomorrow. And the point is that you're not. You're here and you're present. And I want you to be you, honestly you, because that's for real. Right, so am I making sense? I think I've, I, I think I, I hope I'm making sense. So you know, being willing to look at the at the at the luminal space between the contrasts of a very high vibrational feeling and a very low one, and allow yourself to feel that. You know, so many people are anxious because they're holding back tears as a sign of weakness. Whereas tears to me is just, you know, it's just allowing yourself to let whatever that is that needs to come out, come out instead of getting anxious because you're holding back tears and you're afraid to cry because maybe you were told that it was wrong or it was a sign of weakness as a child. Crying is just a release of the old story. It's a letting go of all this sort of em emotional crap that you've been damming up 
inside and again coming back to the energies that we're in right now at the moment we have sun and cancer with the moon in virgo so this is very much the earth it's about grounding feeling staying in your body hi kelly even though there is maybe a lot of water right now so so the ground isn't quite as solid as it as it is that you're used to and just allowing yourself to go there without expecting a response so if i if if somebody texts me so i've had a backlog because i've allowed myself to go in since sunday you know, after you know we had this huge intensive day i had a sick child i had just you know, been processing all this stuff around helping and supporting a pony pass die, leave his body. And these other horses that were in this morphogenetic field of thinking, oh my gosh, I do not have free will in the choice because there's humans involved as to whether it, the next bullet could be mine. And looking at how are you living your life from that place? Because the way I live, I invite every misunderstanding that I may consciously or unconsciously be entertaining, right, to scare myself silly or to be slapped out of my hands. Um, and, and it certainly isn't always pleasant and, and it's not a target or a goal, but I'm willing to welcome more. And I'm so grateful for all the gifts that have just been coming so much faster now as I kind of give myself more space to just sit with that feeling that I can take the initial hit, I can take the shock and the trauma of it, of the emotions that follow it. I know it's all happening for me so that I can show up and be and give more and grow more because of it. Because these emotions are my business. It's not about you. You know, if somebody doesn't call you back straight away or and you're in that expectation of, you know, why aren't they paying attention to me? Can you rather just know that that you don't expect a response and love that? Uh, if I call someone and I don't and I and you don't call me back when I let go of the expectation that you should be calling me back and loving the part that thinks, why are you not calling me back? You get to start to truly love from the present moment to know that this this is just the old story. It's just the old stuff that's coming up. And it's needed. It's it's welcomed in. Welcome that in. So that you can allow more, more expansion and more freedom and more joy of what's coming next. So I left that that moment of a very low low of crying of letting those emotional attachments to that could be me when I saw that pony die and giving him the reverence and the space and the thanks and the gratitude for being a great little pony and that he could go now and go get himself a new body if he wanted to treat myself the same way and allow myself to be okay with not knowing what's coming next that's the freedom of living in awareness of truth and grace and trust and ease and faith and I get to experience a little more of me living from love not from the misidentification of abuse being love or trauma being love or anything else so every misunderstanding, every miscommunication, every part of that that goes on on a daily basis all day long <clears throat> is really love. Every letter is a, is a love letter. Every act is an act of love. And it's, it's an honor, isn't it, to live in, in this big wide open space that every story is eventually going to fall away every illusion is going to just dissolve back into laughter when you stop resisting that from a place of unloving or uncommitment or dis is it discompassion uncompassion in compassion i don't know but i hope you get what i'm saying so allow yourself to have that 
allow yourself to have that after I left the stables and, and the veterinary hospital on Saturday. I was, I was so in appreciation that I got to go and spend some time with one of my very favorite people, Lisa, who has been a friend of mine through thick and thin and ups and down and suicide attempts and broken hearts and marriages and divorces and so much, so much that we've been through together over the last 30 years. And we were talking about how often communication is actually just an attempt at manipulation an attempt to get love or approval or acceptance because we feel incomplete, we feel unsafe. And it all just comes back to this illusion that there's some kind of, of incompleteness, of not love, of problem, of lack, of insecurity. So, you know, if you think that you need someone else's validation, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, then how can, how can anybody else love you or how can their validation mean anything from a place of meaning making? If you're not complete as you, if you can't love you as imperfect and beautiful and messy and perfect in all of that, how can you do anything but be disappointed and right now now there's the leaf blower going and I love that uh, <laughs> but how can you how can you expect anything bigger than that if their validation of you holds any power or meaning it can't so what would you experience if you knew that someone else never went into the expectation of feeling the need of a response to validate that they're loving enough. That you fully understand that your response or no response is none of my business. It's your business. It has nothing to do with me. It, it says nothing about me or how I love you. It just is your expectation in that moment. Does that make sense? I think I've been going for a long time today. Um, but I just feel like I needed to speak to this today, not just for myself. And, and thank you for showing up so that I get to process and grow and give more and gain more by these spontaneous conversations on Facebook Live. But um, let love tell you. Let love tell you that, that everything that you're being and doing, when you're coming from a place of freely expressing love, and you love the part that doesn't want to express from there too, because that's the, the unside of it, where real transformation starts to happen, is that you take accountability and you, and you own the part that actually doesn't love, love that about you or the the experience or the story or what the leaf blower next door that's really getting on my nerves and I love that right now. Um, <laughs> it's been noisy around here but wood chippers and all sorts of noise that's out there um, and when I allowed myself to just love that it could become a contribution to me going deep down into my meditation into this conversation with you to know that nothing's going to change except my story about noise and distraction and whatever else might be coming up for you. Is this making sense? So, I guess I'm done. Um, you know, it might, I'm hoping that in, in sharing this today, that it might open up a space for you to, a, a, a deeper space, right? where you're not sinking in the quicksand because right now there's too much water in the earth of your body of work, of your body. Um, all the snot that's coming up for my daughter and I know there's a lot of grief, repressed grief coming up. There's a lot of tears that have been crying inward for so long that are ready to come out and sometimes it's a messy business. But you're not on quicksand. You're not going to get sucked 
down into the into the middle of the earth claim your stake ask for help get support because when you come out from under these old stories that are scaring you silly and the illusions of all the lies you bought that are actually not true you get to start to experience this freedom that's always been there but that you haven't allowed yourself the time out to sit with and 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 deepen your understanding and your and your acknowledgement of it that that you are always always no matter what your circumstances completely free completely love exactly as you are and even if you don't experience that my own awareness of the truth of non-expectation is the trust it's the falling from grace that oh gosh there you go i just broke another one of my expectations that i need to be in a certain place or look a certain way or do as things a certain time and space and my routine has been completely thrown out with my daughter being sick from off from school and we like certainty in the in the things that that we've made predictable in all these evidentiary contrivances of how we expect life to show up rather than look at life growing through us. And that's the win-win. You know, when you, when you just know that you don't need to know and, and love it. And, and then expectation doesn't exist. And if you're in an awareness as well, our exchanges are always going to be conscious acts of love, of compassion, of allowance, of absolute and total freedom. And how beautiful is that? <clears throat> you know, expectation can't exist there. Judgment can't exist from that space. So if you're feeling feelings that are coming up from brokenness,